know, I was one of those uh, kids who, who came to this literally as, as early as I can remember and, and uh, doing drawings. And, uh, you know, to me, the house, I mean, that's where it all starts because uh, I lived in a house in Beverly Hills, California, up in a canyon. And, and uh, I, I just, you know, I think it's the most personal um, uh, part of architecture, the most personal building type. And I love uh, Winston Churchill's quote that we shape our institutions and then they shape us. And I think the house does start the shaping of, of all of us. Uh, and uh, so um, I continued with my interest in architecture and, and uh, um, kind of went away from, from residential architecture when I worked for some larger firms in Chicago. And uh, the, uh, my first uh, real commission on a house was actually from my parents, another uh, classic architect story where, where you get your first commission from mom. And uh, in this case, my mother and father for a, a ranch that they had just purchased in Wyoming. And uh, I was working for a, a large uh, institutional firm that was doing high rises and, and it was really quite uh, unusual. But um, I've always loved doing houses and, and uh, since that time in my career, I moved to Wyoming and have a practice in Jackson Hole that is at least 50% in uh, residential architecture. We like the balance. We like being able to apply what we learn in residential architecture. But I, it's, it's really been um, very close to my heart. And um, uh, I, I, I enjoy designing houses as much as any other building type. Houses can be very complicated. They can involve some of the most experimental uh, parts of architecture. We feel that uh, houses are a great testing ground for uh, ideas that we might have that can't be done as easily on a, on a larger project. And uh, so we, we find it to be very liberating and, and uh, um, challenges our creativity to you know, try different things that, uh, that might not be be uh, uh, really viable on, on larger projects. I think that uh, the, the challenges of a single family house are every bit as, as, as difficult as, as a larger building. And I think it's kind of a microcosm. Uh, and so to be able to do more projects like that because they're smaller is, uh, is really fun for me personally. Well, we have made a very conscious attempt in the firm to do a range of projects. And it's pretty clear to me that at the top end, and the reason that our firm is, is probably as busy as we are right now, is that we're working for the proverbial 1%. When we're doing those jewel box houses or those really special projects that uh, any architect relishes, uh, that's really for a very high end of the market. And we know that is not necessarily uh, applicable to, to the rest of the world. But we also are doing either modular or affordable housing, um, subsidized housing projects. We like to have that balance. Uh, and I, I really think that whether you're doing a $150 a foot house that's, uh, or modular uh, or uh, affordable housing project or a very, very high-end custom house. I think the services of an architect are vital. Uh, just in site planning alone, I think architects bring great value. If, if anybody's ever seen a, you know, what an engineer or a contractor might turn out for a site plan, it's just going to be very different than what an architect would bring. And then I think it just continues through the entire process with all the kind of integration of systems and all the things that uh, need to be balanced in, uh, regardless of the level of quality or kind of social strata that you're designing for. And so I, I think that uh, uh, I think that it's really the greatest value to have an architect. And I think that what, what we as a profession struggle with a little bit is that uh, there's not a, enough money at the lower end. If you really are trying to do um, a, a house that for a $250,000 budget, for instance, I mean, it's tough to have uh, enough money on top of that for a fee or to have a fee that's a reasonable percentage of the overall cost. So um, I think uh, 
we're, we're seeing architects struggle with that. We've heard about how maybe you do a design build thing when you have a lower budget, you can, you can scrape by for less, you can, some of the fee gets carried over to the uh, contracting side, but I think, I think that it, it is absolutely vital and I, I wish that architects were involved in a greater percentage of, of the housing that gets built in this country today. I think it's uh, to a great loss that uh, much of, of what is built is not done by an architect. But I do, I really think architects would make anything better. Right. And uh, uh, so, yeah, architects make life better <laughs> through their designs. I think that architects will be needed more. Uh, the challenges that face us today with everything from global warming uh, to the uh, uh, sort of end of peak oil and, and you know, being, having a harder and harder time uh, uh, providing fuel. Uh, and when you look at the amount of uh, energy that's consumed by the, by the building, uh, uh, by buildings as opposed to cars and other, uh, <clears throat> other uses, it's, it's, it's really stunning and we can have a great effect. So I think architects are gonna be more important uh, than, than maybe we are now and it's hard to feel optimistic after um, the downturn that we've been through and are still continuing in for the most part. And, uh, but I think it's, it's really critical and, uh, you know, I sort of that question starts to get into kind of political lines and, and kind of what you, what you may believe about the future. I do think that um, we will always be doing houses. I think there will always be stratifications of society and, and uh, uh, you know, there will be really high-end stuff that we hope will be balanced out by equal quality on the lower end. And I was just actually reading a very good book by Paul Goldberger talking about the importance of architecture in, in life. And he made the point that, that in uh, um, earlier societies, look back at say 19th century England or, or look at some of the great cities of the world, Paris, uh, you can actually see an incredibly high level of architecture, whether it was for a cathedral or uh, some row housing in, you know, uh, on the outskirts of London uh, for the working class. And there was a period when everything had architectural quality. A, a little Georgian set of row houses um, for workers in, in a suburb of London um, could be uh, just sort of a scaled down, less expensive version of the really nice townhouses, uh, you know, in Bath on the Crescent or some, you know, some great thing. And so I, he was, was really lamenting the fact that we've lost that, that there is a big gap now between beauty as seen in, in some public buildings and, and, uh, uh, and higher end houses and, you know, what everything else. Mm -hmm.